welcome to episode 50 of Own the Road with Auto Trader, where we make car stuff simple for Canadians. My name is Jody Lai, and I'm the editor in chief of Auto Trader. And I'm Dan Alika. I'm Auto Trader's road test editor. And this is such a special episode for us because it's episode 50. I Pretty can't crazy. believe it's been 50 episodes. Uh, so thank you to everybody who tunes in, watches us on YouTube uh, and on your favorite podcast provider. We are so, so grateful for all your support. And so this episode is really dedicated to you. Dan and I are going to be answering Ask an Expert uh, questions throughout this whole episode. We've dedicated the whole episode to it. So thank you all so much for sending in those questions. Um, I also want to take this opportunity to make sure you're all following us on all of our social media accounts. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe yeah. to the podcast. I have this goal. I'm going to put it out there. It's called 100K Everywhere. Wow. I want Auto Trader to have is 100K that bad, subscribers. Is that bad juju? Well, no, I want to put it out there okay. because our listeners are so wonderful and so supportive that if you all go and, you know, smash that subscribe button, you're going to make me look really good in front of my bosses. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Like and subscribe, yo. Okay, so before <laughs> we get to this, I do want to say uh, right before we started recording, I mentioned to Jody as well as our, our producer, Chris, I'm nervous for the first time. Now, it's this isn't a flex, but luckily through... You know, 49 episodes, I have been pretty good at answering these questions that we get without knowing them in advance. I intentionally do not look at the questions because I want it to be a genuine response. And so through 49, not, I'm not always, you know, answering them. Jody does too. But through 49 episodes, I have yet to be stumped. Uh, and for the first time ever, I'm like, I was sweating a bit before we we started rolling because I'm like, I don't know. This is a lot of questions. Yeah. One question a week, occasionally two or three if we have time versus I don't even know how many are in this little truck. Yeah. So these are all questions. Neither Dan or I have seen them before. We have this little red auto trader pickup truck and all the questions are in the bed. I'll just like rustle them around for the, uh, for the, the for the listeners. So the, the thing that I want to say to you guys uh, still, you know, to this, we do not edit this, this show. We, everything that you hear, like, yes, you know, Chris is, is working his magic, making sure it looks good and it sounds good, but there are no clips. There are no cuts. We are not like splicing shots together and we are not going to change that. We are not going to do that today. If we come across a question that we do not have the answer to, we are going to be honest and we will say, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll do some research. So um, if you happen to stump us, we want to be genuinely, you know, stumped by these. But again, I'm, I'm a little worried. I mean, we're all about trust and transparency, right? So yes. just, we want it to be, you know, fully above board with everybody. Yeah. Um, and if you, of course, if you have any questions that you would like to ask Dan or I, please email expert at trader.ca. We try to at least answer one or two in every episode, yeah. but this episode is all ask an expert and I'm really excited. Wait, before there is one, one bit of extra. I want to talk about this Mercedes. Oh yes, go for it. GLS class. So I, it's not that I didn't want to drive it, but Jody assigned me this this review. She told me, "Oh, go go book the the GLS class," and I was kind of like, oh, "It's a big SUV, and I don't really, you know, care that much." Um, so I, you know, not begrudgingly, but I was like, "Ah, oh, it's just another vehicle." I picked this thing up, and I am just absolutely blown away. Yes, it's expensive. This one is the GLS 580, so it starts at $140,500 before tax in Canada. The ride quality is, without question, the best I have ever experienced. And the crazy thing is I confirmed with Mercedes because, okay, it has air suspension and it has adaptive dampers, but then Mercedes also has this package called e motion control, something like that. Basically, uh, it uses the uh, a, stereoscopic, a stereoscopic camera behind the windshield. It measures the road ahead, and it adjusts the damping rates and the spring rates at each wheel just over and over and over again to make it as smooth as possible. It's very expensive, uh, and I was convinced that this thing had this, this upgrade that's like 8900 bucks. So I emailed Mercedes it does not have that system. This is a better ride than the Maybach S-Class that we tested last year. 
That is huge praise. But now it also makes me wonder what it would be like if it did have that system. True. Now, uh, so Jody and I usually, because we're testing vehicles, you know, the drive to the studio is a great opportunity to get some more time behind the wheel. I picked Jody up this morning so that we could come in here. And she was, you were just as blown away by the ride. You could not feel a single thing. Like he purposely drove over like a sewer grate and you didn't even feel it. It's unbelievable how how crazy comfortable and smooth Love it. this thing is. So anyways, now we can get on to, but I had to share that. Because, I mean, the seats are also covered in brown leather and it looks like chocolate. And and it's got massage, which Jody hates if you've listened to the show before. This is the only thing we disagree on is this, I hate massaging seats and you love them. The two things, massaging seats and the Kia Telluride. <laughs> oh, that's true too. And the way I say pasta, apparently. <laughs> anyways. Okay, let's go. First question. Do you call it pasta or pasta? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Or the supermarket. He makes fun of me because I say supermarket instead of grocery What is this? Store. Sesame Street? Th I came from the streets. Oh okay? my God. The Sesame Streets. Okay. Oh, this one is fun. Okay. This is Barish from Auto Trader HQ. Barish Akurak, who you might have uh, seen on the show before, is Auto Trader's uh, VP of Insights and Intelligence. He puts out our quarterly price index. That guy is a genius. So his question is, what is your ultimate holy grail car? That is, if you guys had to pick one car for the rest of your lives, what would it be and why? One car only. Oh my God. That's such a hard question. Okay. Mine would have to be a wagon of some sort. Um, I'm obviously like leaning towards new because that's kind of what's fresh right. in my mind. So the, the Audi RS6 is up there. That's hard to beat. But if I were to look at something like a little bit older, remember for a brief period of time, you could get a Volvo V60 Polestar with a manual transmission. Oh my God. So you had all that performance with a six speed. Ooh. And in that, like, whatever they call it, but the Polestar the blue, blue, that would be a, a pretty epic car. What about you? That's a hard one for me to answer because, like, you I can't don't, do this. I know. I don't have kids. I feel like my Holy Grail car it might be something like the 911 Dakar. Honestly, I know it sounds stupid because it's like wildly impractical, but I Is love it safe that to say car. that's Dakar for you? <laughs> Stop. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's bad. I always, I always feel good if I can see out of the corner of my eye that Chris is laughing. I'm like, boom. Or it, shaking his head. It hit. It, yeah. The dad joke landed. Yeah. He's going to be like, that's going to be the social clip for this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love the 911 Dakar. I mean, I'm a 911 person and I have been ever since I was a child. So that to me would be like the most holy grail. But especially the Dakar, because as impractical as a 911 is, I feel like the Dakar is slightly, ever so slightly more practical. You could drive it year round. It's you got could. the ground clearance to get, you know, a snow covered parking lot isn't going to be a problem. Yep. Uh, you could have some fun, turn some heads, yep. put smiles put, on other people's faces. I can put faces. all the stuff in the roof basket on top. It's it's yeah. great. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there we go. That was good. Thanks. Thanks, Barish, for that. For that, that, was question. that was a good question. That was good. The, the RS6 is, was a good one, but I had to oh, choose something that's, different. That's the RS6. And I also think, like, if we were looking historically, of course, like, oh, I mean, this would, oh, even, floodgates. okay, how about this? And this one will, will kind of, uh, this will speak to Barish. He's, he's a big Porsche file. For, for those of you who don't know, he owns a Boxster. He, he drools over when he's not on his, you know, on the racing sim at work. Um, he's dreaming of, of Porsches. That's why we get along so well, me and Barish. The Audi RS2, which has <gasps> huge tie-ins with Porsche. Porsche developed the engine and suspension, I think it was. And anyways, and that was when they were both companies, they were not connected under the Volkswagen Group, and they were both struggling financially. And that car is what they came up with, and it is absolutely incredible. So if we're talking about, again, like, you know, Imagine it's pristine that I could buy a brand new one today. That would also be yeah. up there. Don't open the classic that's car what, floodgates. That's on what me. I'm saying. So, anyways, okay, that, but we've 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 settled that. One. Okay, good. Okay, next question. Do you want to do the next yes. one? <clears throat> Is the car culture dying as the new generation seems to be more into experiences rather than owning things? Ah, so is car culture not what it used to be because, you know, people are into maybe, I guess, like more into experiences. Uh, so travel. Right. Like they're spending their money elsewhere. That's a really good question. I love that question. And um, I think about this a lot. 
Really? Uh, I do because, you know, it's that nostalgia of mm-hmm. like, we were really lucky. I mean, you know, some of the, some, some older folks might think it's ridiculous, but, but Jody and I are the same age. And so, you know, we were, we were teenagers in the, in the early two thousands, um, which was peak fast and furious yeah. time, which for a lot of people, and I am not a fan. Jody knows this. I've That's only another ever thing we se- disagree on. <laughs> totally. Uh, I've only ever seen the first two movies, but what it did for car culture in general. And my friends and I were all big car nuts. And that to me was like peak, you know, tuner scene. And now it's, it's, you know, the scene has been gutted. Uh, it's quite a bit different now, but I think it's just shifting a little bit. So, See? oh, this is another thing we disagree on. Well, okay. So for me, like if whenever you go to like a cars and coffee, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of the stuff you see there is exactly from that era of Fast and Furious that we love so much, but for also sure. older stuff. So I think like people our age, especially so like, like elder millennial type people are super nostalgic about that time period and everything that came before. And so in that sense, the car culture is alive, but like, what about people younger than us? Like, are people who are twenty right now? Do well, that, they care about that stuff? Well, as that's much what as I'm we saying, do? and that's what this question yeah. is. And the reason why I disagree with you, we grew up in that prime. Remember, there was like performance improvements stores on in every city, and it was like that was the thing, right? right. People were. It was like you know, Racers Edge and Fast and Furious, and it was like you know. That was the the thing. How many magazines? Yes, magazines in general, you know, are are right. it's, it, that industry is in decline. But the point is that there were all of these tuner publications. There were movies about it. That it was part of culture in general, like just pop culture. That's true. There was so much about cars. Cars played such a big role, and that is not the case anymore. That's true. And that's I also the part think that I now that things are shifting to like EVs, it's a lot harder for people to get into that because you can't just tune an EV without having extensive software knowledge. We should have the next time we have Barish on the show, um, we should ask him because he has a son. Right. And I would be curious to know about not just his son specifically, but his son's friend group mm-hmm. would be kind of a good sample size of what they're like. Because when when I was a kid, so some of my my best friends in the world, Jeff Crane, Jeff Richards, we are Jeff Richards just bought an old Triumph TR6. Oh, cool! Um, like we are all still very much into cars. That's mm-hmm. something that that has has been a bond for us for years. So some of my closest friends are are car people, and that that was sort of what brought us together. Um, so I wonder if that same thing applies, or if if to Barish's point, people. You know, young kids maybe aren't owning cars at the frequency that they were when we were young. Although I was also talking to a group at a boys school, so like a middle school age or maybe even a little bit younger than that. And they had a car club where they just gathered once a week to talk about cars and car news. And when I was talking to them, they loved supercars. Like supercars was like oh, the I remember thing you told me that they this. all yeah. got really excited okay, about. Okay, so maybe so maybe we just can't see it, so we think it's dying. But I I just think so. Okay, I don't think it's dead, but I think I I think car culture is dying. Is it because of experiences and and travel and and lack of affordability? Maybe maybe it's just not what you know we because not just in North America, right? Globally, if you look at, you know, initial D in Japan through the 90s right. and then when it came over here, it, it, that really helped to perpetuate, you know, car culture and keep it in the, you know, as a as a sort of dominant force. And we don't really have those between fast because it's like anything, right? You see the Fast and Furious movies and then you're like, what I, I love this. I love cars. What else is out there? And I think that helped to get a lot of people involved or or spark an interest yeah that's a good point and now there hasn't been you know though th- that franchise has gone so off the rails i mean i still love Didn't they go to outer space <sighs> Maybe, no i don't, I don't think they did but they did launch a car from building it just it's it's beyond the car it's beyond a car culture thing now yeah. it's like just a dumb action movie and yeah. i love dumb action movies so i'm all for that um but i don't know just as an example to your point i, w- I recently watched the latest top gun Okay. And I have like no nostalgia for that from when I was a kid. So I watched the new one and I was like, wow, 
fighter pilots you be a fighter are the pilot coolest now? people ever. And it got me really excited about See? friggin' planes. And I have no interest See? in planes. That's what I think. We need happened. a car movie like that. We do. Now. We do. And yeah. remember back in that era, you know, Hollywood obviously caught on and you had like the Italian job and all the, you know, so it, it, it was a thing, right? right? But anyways, okay. Next question. Sure. Are we happy? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry if I mispronounce your, your name, but Anon asks, <laughs> have you ever, or is this just anonymous? It's anonymous. Oh, I'm such an idiot. You, you literally thought that was someone's name. I did. <laughs> I did. I see, and we're not going to cut this. That's so embarrassing. That's so funny. I thought you were kidding. No, I was, I was being dead serious. This is an, and this is a personal question. Okay. So why did it have to be anonymous? Have you ever had kimchi on pizza? And if not, would you ever try it? I have because I had pizza at, um, what's that place I told you about? It's, it's called like, no, soy snacks in, Mm. in Markham. And they put kimchi on pizza. Yes. That actually sounds pretty good. Yes. You can get like pad thai pizza and everything. Wow. I can't believe this is anonymous. And I thought for, I was like, oh, this is, this is one of our French listeners. (laughs) Monsieur Renon. Yeah. Um, I have not had kimchi on pizza, but I do like a good kimchi. Highly recommended. Highly recommended. Okay. Um, but a funny question. How yeah. random. Okay, next question. Cam from UX. Oh, this is our friend Cam Ward. Yeah. Um, in the year 2030, what will the top five car manufacturers be? Wow, what a question. Oh, my. I mean. Where's our crystal ball? 2030. I would say I still think Tesla will be up there. I don't think Tesla's up there now. I mean, they're, they make. Don't they make more money than anyone else at the moment? No. no okay. The value. I think Toyota will be up there 100%. So, so just like the, the clarification there, Toyota is a bigger auto. Toyota and Volkswagen have, have been in right. this sort of like, you know, back and forth a little bit of like the world's largest automaker thing. Um Tesla is the world's most valuable. Right. But, but in that's terms based of volume, on, it's not up and there. And that's based on market valuation, which we could get into the whole, you know, wh- where we stand on the oh, stock market and whatever. Yeah. But it's like, it's such a joke to me that, you know, Ford makes way more vehicles, but is worth less than than Tesla. I'll never understand that because a bunch of speculators go, but look at its potential. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, but it hasn't lived up to that potential. No, absolutely not. So. Top five by 2030. Yep. I think it's going to be largely unchanged. So I think it's yeah. going to be, you know, Toyota, Volkswagen, Ford, GM, and I. One that, of the European ones. Well, no, but I mean, Volkswagen owns that's all true. of those. That's true. All of those brands, but but Stellantis would be the fifth because of, you know, the, all of the European brands as well as. And and it's on a bit of a a bit of a uh, come up with you know it went from this really antiquated lineup that it, new vehicles yeah. are coming. I think it's gonna. They're kind of undergoing like a, a huge renaissance right now. Yes. Yeah, like Beyonce. Yes, I guess. We need more Beyonce references in this podcast. I'm not the right guy for that. I don't know anything about her. I'm serious. This is one of those things. You know me in in pop culture. That's true. I know. Don't get me wrong. Like I know who she is. <laughs> But like, if you were to ask, like, what, like my the last, if you wanted me to name a song by her, I don't even know the name of it. And the only one that comes to mind, this is not a joke, is that uh, sing it, put a ring on it. Oh, and I feel like that's really old. Uh, it's yeah, that's literally the only one. Okay, that's amazing to me. I know, and again, oh, and the other this this also goes to show you, you know, kind of where I'm coming from. I remember that she was in. Austin Powers gold member. Right. She was Foxy Cleopatra. She was. She was a whole lot of woman. That's yeah. What, yeah. Yeah. But, but, but that's, I'm not like, uh, I know that, you know, she's married to Jay Z, I think, and she has some, a kid with him or something. Okay. And, so, you know, like a couple minor facts about but, Beyonce. But, yeah. If we're, if we're injecting some Beyonce into this episode, we're going to have to do some serious edits because I won't. That's okay. Be able to keep we, up. we, we can keep up. We, we, we don't have to go there. Um, but Anon is back with another question. Thanks, Anon. <laughs> wow. That's so funny to me. Does Auto Trader really give Canadians an advantage when buying a car? I mean, obviously, yes. I mean, I'm biased because I work there, but I honestly think, and because we get to see behind the scenes so often, like the team we work with is so dedicated to making sure that Canadians have a source to go to from beginning to end. And like, 
I guess we know stuff that we can't even talk about yet, but like there are things happening that will legitimately change the way Canadians buy cars. And I'm really excited about it. I also just think that, um, you know, scale, scale in this case is a huge factor, right? So auto trader just being such it's, you know, we're, we're coming up on a, a major anniversary next year. Um, it's one of those things where when you have five decades of, of experience and five decades of market leadership mm -hmm. for, for lack of a better term. So you come to auto trader, there's so much to pick from. And then of course, you know, there, there are tools that exist because of that. So like price IQ is such a great, you know, a yeah. great example of that where it's like, you know, you're looking at a market snapshot and you're able to see, you know, what, what the pricing is like based on other vehicles on the market, a smaller marketplace isn't going to have that advantage. Exactly. Some guy with a car in his driveway with a for sale sign in the window does not have that advantage. No, he's like, I know what I got, but like yeah, we, we use the data exactly, so people know what they got. Exactly. So yeah, there are lots. And like Jody said, there are new, you know, there, there are new things in the hopper that are really going to be a big, you know, boost to consumers. Ultimately that's what, what, this is about and that's what we we do right at the end of the day um the reason you know jody knows this the reason i joined auto trader so i used to be an automotive journalist uh i was approached by by an automaker to to work in pr you left me i left jody was my boss back in the day uh and i left and you know hindsight being what it is i always thought uh, if i could do it all over again I would really like to just kind of focus on Canadian consumers. Don't get me wrong. I got a lot of love for, for non-Canadians, but it was just like as a, as a, you know, proud Canadian and, and somebody who was looking at, at the, the, you know, my, my legacy for lack of a better term, I was like, I wish I would have focused a little bit more on that. And that would be the, the, if I could do it all over again. And then, you know, fast forward to, to 2019, which is crazy. Wow. Um, Jody got a, got, hired as editor in chief, the first editor in chief in, in auto traders history. And we were, a bunch of us were together for dinner, just like, you know, chatting and talking about Jody had just started talking about her vision, um, for, for the editorial direction and just kind of was like, you know, well, what joke half jokingly, like, you know, would you come do, I want to do more video. Would you? And I was like, yeah. And then it was like, really? And I was like, yeah. And then, you know, we, we, she was like, well, let me, take this back and see what we can do. And and then a few months later I joined the team and it's, and that was the motivation, like to work with Jody again, but to work for a brand that I'm proud to represent yeah. and to speak to Canadians and provide advice. And maybe this is a good opportunity to like remind you guys, like what we do, we are lucky that we have, you know, bosses like our, our, our big boss, our chief marketing officer, Ian McDonald, this isn't just a, hey, you know, let me, let me, uh, you know, get some brownie points. It's genuine that we have supportive leadership who, who trusts us and what we do. So Ian McDonald, our, our vice president, uh, Carl Bonner, you know, even above and beyond, you know, what, what we do personally, just overall editorial, there's so much trust to let us be independent and let mm -hmm. us do what we do. And that is such a motivating factor as, you know, we both come up on our, our five year anniversaries, uh, at auto trader. It's to know that I can do what I do with the backing and the trust of, you know, of management is what, is what yeah. keeps it going. And, and this kind of just all brings it back. And I'm, I'm sorry to keep like tooting the auto trader horn, but like, I do believe in this company. I do believe that they're doing everything that they can to help Canadian car consumers feel more empowered. And that's why we exist. This, yeah. this is why we do our jobs is because our, our, that commitment to consumers is it, it it's expressed through our work yeah. like that and that's all it is and maybe the little um you know kind of if you want to call it like peek behind the curtain or whatever about about us in our department uh as an editorial department our sort of mandate you know if you take and this isn't I'm not throwing shade at at other outlets other publications out there who you know we have a lot of friends in this business who you know work their asses off and I, and you know, I have nothing but respect, but we don't, we're not in this based on, oh, well, let's do that video or write that review because it's going to get more views. 
it's this isn't we're not like beholden to performance necessarily. Yes, of course we want our stuff to do well and we want to do what matters to consumers, but that really is the the luxury that we have that we get to pass on to you guys is we get to focus on what we think and when we get questions about specific reviews that we we know that you guys want and we can do those and it doesn't matter because we're not driven by the metrics, we're driven by providing our expertise to consumers and that is you guys and that's why we do what we do and we have that freedom that you don't see at a lot of other outlets that's a great point what a great question uh expertly planted by by someone we work with i'm sure you mean anon <laughs> okay oh this is uh, anonymous from the muddy shores of lake erie oh. i'm not sure who this is however i've heard dan is a six six absolute gorilla of a man have there been any cars you guys have had to road test that you just don't fit in? Oh my God! Hello, uh, Erie Lake Sea Monster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is this is true. This is like, and I wish I knew who this was, but crazy. So I'm not six six. Uh, I'm like maybe six four, but this is no joke. This morning when I picked up Jody in this GLS class, which is a very large SUV, I said to her. I cannot fit in the third row. This is the first three row SUV that I have maybe ever been in Wow! that I cannot fit. And I'm not talking about, oh, it's just uncomfortable. Quite literally, I cannot put the second row back in place. Yeah. And I tried everything. You, you can can't, you can't just like twist your body. Well, if, so if into... I sat completely sideways, but if I'm sitting upright with the third row lean back and the second row seat back tilted forward, but pushed all the way forward on its, you know, mechanized rails cannot fit Wow! in the back seat, literally. So that is one of the, the other one, a little, a little insight I'll, I'll give you guys. Um, Toyota, notoriously poor headroom, notoriously mm. poor. And it doesn't matter the size, uh, the, the segment, it, the Camry, the RAV4, as soon as a sunroof is in the mix, it becomes a big problem. But I will so the Toyota Crown, one of my favorite cars of the last five years, wow. blown away by this thing, but headroom is terrible. So Toyota revealed the Crown Signia. The SUV version. And I was nervous because I was like, oh man, I love the look of it and it makes so much sense. But if I can't fit in it, like it's, you know, it's gonna be no good. So we went to a preview event. And the first thing I did was walk over there and I got in the back seat and I was like, oh my God, I can fit. And then I got in the front seat and I was like, I can fit. Angel seat. And it's got this panoramic sunroof, but I can fit no problem. So uh, it's nice to see. But yes, there there have been some issues, this being, you know, the, this GLS class being one of them, which is surprising that because it's so big. Thank you, Gorilla Man. You're welcome. Uh, you can read the next one. Um, okay. What is it really like working at auto? Well, I think we answered that a couple of questions ago. I really like it. Yeah. This Honestly, like I've worked, so I, the auto trader is maybe the third, the third place I've worked at, uh, in, throughout my career in this industry. Yeah. And I can legitimately say I have never been happier. Yeah. I'm, I'm sort of the same way. And, uh, and again, a little bit of this isn't, you know, this is not, this is not, uh, just praise for the sake of it. I've been pretty transparent about this. You know, a lot of friends that work at companies that over the course of the pandemic felt um, that there was like a lack of trust working from home, that their management, you know, was suspicious of everyone and and whatever. Uh, I felt like the pandemic brought this company together in such a crazy way that, you know, from the top yeah. down. We really rallied. And and it that energy still exists. I, you know, we go into the office a couple of days a week and I love it. I love everyone that we work with, specifically on the so so we work under the marketing, you know, department uh as as the sort of larger umbrella. And everyone that we work with has been, you know, I've made some like genuine friends and just people that I that I so look forward to to seeing on a weekly basis. Yeah. And that's the sort of thing that helps, 
make it an even better place to work. Yeah, also because I think that like everybody, like the sense of like teamwork is super, super strong on our team. Yes. So like it is really cool to see how everybody works together towards the same goal. And like, I don't want to let anyone down. So I'm always pulling really yeah. hard too. So I love working there. But like just to give you insight into how much people love Dan, he's on the road a lot, uh, just testing different cars and new car launches and stuff. But I go in quite a bit. Um, and then immediately when I go in, they're like, hey, Jody, where's Dan? I'm like, but I'm right here. And they're like, no, we want Dan. <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's nice to. to Everyone be, loves you. Yeah. And, and I just love that that energy. I'll also say um, and it goes it does go beyond the marketing department. I, again, this isn't a promo piece, but the question <laughs> led us to this. You know, two years in a row, um, Auto Trader has been named a uh, one of Canada's great places to work, True. which is huge because that, you know, that's a company wide survey, right? So this isn't just me and Jody being like, yeah, we love it. This is, you know, everyone There's in the data. company. Exactly. And and so um I do think it's it's real. I do think that energy is pretty amazing. And uh I would legitimately like recommend it as a company, just culturally, to to anyone, you know, look at like check out the 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 job postings, check out our I don't know, LinkedIn or whatever you call it. Um, because it really is. I I love working here. It's been almost five years and it's just fantastic. I will put this on your next performance oh, review. Thanks. <laughs> uh we're running out of time, but since this oh, is no. just an ask an expert one, we we'll just do a couple more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cam from UX oh. asks. Uh, for Jody, how much chocolate milk does Dan consume in one year? Oh my god! So like, chocolate milk is Dan's like what top beverage? Well, besides beer, beer yeah. Top non-alcoholic beverage is chocolate milk. Yeah, like so. I am not a. Uh, I don't. I really only drink water. It, that's so coffee in the morning. I'll have like a couple couple coffees, and then throughout the day, like I don't drink pop. I don't drink mm -hmm. juice. And to be quite honest with you guys. I don't like, like, white milk. No, it's chocolate milk or nothing. I literally do not, like, I'll eat cereal, but I do not drink a glass of milk. I do not, like, and even it took me years. When I was a kid, I ate cereal, and then there was a huge gap, like, probably 10 years, because I didn't like the the taste of, of milk, right. but chocolate milk is, oh, boy. So this guy buys them in those, like, three-liter bags. Becky hates it. <laughs> Becky hates it. Now, I, I didn't even know they sold chocolate milk in that format. I, it is my, and not all grocery stores do. So I have to go to specific grocery stores because I also, I don't, there's certain brands that I don't love. Oh, so you're like a connoisseur. Well, I just, I know what I like. <laughs> and, and so I, I seek out if I'm going to buy it, but it's great. Like, so I, I'm a pretty avid mountain biker. Uh, th I think this is why Cam from UX is mm. so skinny and I'm so not. Because you drink so much chocolate milk. Yeah, he's a dainty little man. You gotta get those man. gains. Exactly, big gains. Yeah. And it's great, like, post-ride. post, post -ride. So in the wintertime, because I'm just, like, on my stationary bike at home, I don't drink a lot of it. But in the in the spring, summer, and fall, I'm, I'm even, okay, guys, back in December, I was in Arizona to ride, to drive the, the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. And then there was an, another program in Arizona for the Kia EV9 like days later. So I just stayed and spent the weekend and I rented a mountain bike and it was amazing. And you can go on the site uh, and maybe we'll throw a link in the show notes. Um, I wrote this review and it was about my mountain biking experience and it was amazing. But before I did that, I went to the grocery store and I bought a huge jug of chocolate milk of course. for my post-ride recovery. What Was it like a liter jug? Two liters. What? And you finished that all in one sitting? No, no, no. Oh. Over two rides. Oh. So a liter per... <laughs> That's still so I much. Know, I know. I love it. <laughs> but I'm telling you, maybe this is this is like the thing. We need to get Cam on a, on a chocolate milk heavy diet to put some meat on those bones. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of chocolate milk, but I'm also oh. lactose intolerant. So it's a so bit it's of a not struggle. a fan of you. Is yeah, that exactly. It's a one it's a one way relationship. Yeah. Uh, OK, Barish from Auto Trader HQ asks, he had yes. a lot of questions yeah. for us. What's considered a luxury car? Does it depend on the MSRP, the brand or something else? Wow. We this, discussed this a lot, actually, during, this, especially during awards season. OK, so and that is the good um, lead in. So. For those of you who don't know, shame on you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but for those of you who don't know, uh, 
in this year's Auto Trader Awards, the Hyundai Ionic 6 won Best Premium EV, okay? And this was instant controversy within our team because we right away went, well, this is a bad look because Hyundai is not a, a premium brand. It's not a luxury brand. So what we're going to do starting next year, specifically because of this win, it's not to to stack the deck against Hyundai. Quite the opposite. No, it's to make it more fair for to everybody. To make it more fair for everyone, mostly you guys, because if you're shopping for, like that means that the Porsche Taycan was up against the, the Hyundai Ioniq 6, yeah. which is so silly. And so typically how we divided that was by price. But the more we do this, the more we're thinking like that doesn't really make sense on a consumer level because that's not the way you guys are going out and buying cars. And also prices have gotten, you know, it's, this is just the reality. EVs are, are expensive. Vehicles yeah. in general, prices are up. Um, so, but okay, to get back to the, to the nut of the question, I like that that last bit of the question, right? So it, it was, is it based on, you know, price? Is it based on something else? It's a little bit of that something else. When you know it, you know, so yeah, we know that Mercedes, for example, builds a lot of a lot of luxury vehicles. But if you look at the, you know, the Mercedes Metris, that van, right. that's not a luxury vehicle, right. which became a big problem for Mercedes, by the way, oh, because- in North America. So in Europe, people understand, like every cab in Europe, is a is a in Germany especially is a Mercedes E class. They're not luxurious. They're that's just a, a a car that works. It's reliable. It does the job it needs to, and it's a decent size, and it's affordable. Mercedes has brought more of those affordable models to North America, like the A class. But it's like what you're getting in the A class is not comparable to a C class, to an E class, to an S class. The Metris. People went, oh, my God, a, a Mercedes van. So you had all these fleet operators that were normally buying them that were having a hard time getting their hands on the Metris because private consumers were buying them, being like, it's a Mercedes. But then it wasn't living up to exp- – don't get me wrong. It's I love the Metris. Oh, because people were expecting something to super be, fancy. To be luxurious. Right. And it's really not. It's, it's just like a, a utilitarian – Because in a good example of this, there's there's a organization – I think it was Vincentric years ago – um, I remember reading this study that was about the lowest total cost of ownership for a commercial van was the Mercedes Sprinter. So, and I, I talked to a paramedic about this once in Niagara region who was driving a Mercedes Sprinter based ambulance. And they told me that they got so many complaints from the public. How dare you waste public money oh. on, on a luxury vehicle? Because, but you know, because people don't understand. So in North America, right. we look at the that you know try point As star like a and go oh, thing. exactly. But okay, so going back to that, we know that Mercedes builds you know premium vehicles. But there's that something else when you get into a luxury vehicle, you know it's luxurious. If you get into a Mercedes A class, especially just a base A two twenty or whatever the designation is, it's it doesn't feel luxurious it feels like a a rival to a mazda three right but when you get into an s class you're like oh there's that je ne sais quoi so it's a little bit of everything is what you're saying yes yeah yes okay do you agree i'd agree with that yeah i think i think there's tiers right so it's like for me brand would be first msrp would be second and then that special something would be kind of but here's the problem with the msrp you know discussion right Again, going back to how expensive vehicles are. Yeah, I mean, are. you can buy a Ram TRX for like 120 grand, but it's don't not even, a... But, don't, but that's like a specialty vehicle. I'm talking about just a regular old, like, if you look at a three-row SUV now, right? you know, in the $60,000, like, I'm not talking around six. I'm talking sixty-five, sixty-seven thousand dollars $67,000 for a mainstream model. That is not, an, and I really like the Toyota Grand Highlander, and it won an auto trader award this year for, for best, you know, midsize SUV. And it's great. It is not a premium vehicle, no. but the grand Highlander hybrid max, that's $67,000. That's premium pricing. Yeah. That's a good point. So, so the something else maybe it's has the more else, than yeah, that. It's the best. So when you get into the Lexus TX, it's more expensive, but even a, a TX that's 79 grand 
feels more luxurious than a $67,000 Grand Highlander. Yeah. That's my that's I guess my our take. lesson is we're going to have to discuss this again when awards season comes up yes. next year so we can yes. fix everything. Taking notes. Yeah. Well, that wraps up this episode. Thank you all so much for for your, all your questions. This was so much fun. I think we should do this yes. more often, just like a strictly ask an expert. Big episode. shout out to Anon for all the questions. <laughs> Monsieur wow, Anon. I can't believe that. I'm still shook. I will never no, that's forget a, that. Yeah, yeah. That's like my version of supermarket now. I know. Great. Get ready. I'm going to roast you every time I can. Well, with um, that. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, drive safe, and we'll catch you on our next episode.